Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. This video is gonna be about a camera that I recently acquired from a company called Renika over in Belarus. And Renika contacted me and said, if we send you one of our new pinhole cameras, would you be able to use it and put it on your channel or review it on your channel? I said, yeah, I'll have a lash at that. Send it over and uh, I'll see what I could do. And they did, and there it is there. It's the Renika Prosta 6x6 medium format pinhole camera, all handmade out of wood and a little tiny bit of plastic here and there. And so far the impressions it's given me is uh, looks like a nice little bit of kit to try out. At first glance, the camera, like most pinhole cameras, looks like a wooden toy. It has more of a camera look than my La Rouge 66 pinhole camera, and it might give me a bit more street cred when I'm out shooting it. It's made out of plywood and feels very well built, and it's available in various different colors. This one in particular is olive. Renika have also burn branded the camera with their logo on the front, which I thought was a nice touch, as well as some technical details on the back. It has a pinhole size of 0.2 millimeters and it has an aperture of f156. You open and close the pinhole by using the large dial at the front and it has a black plastic cover that comes over the pinhole for your exposures. It does feel a little bit stiff at first, which did worry me because the last thing you want when you're doing long exposures with a pinhole camera is any camera movement. However, after a while wearing it in, it appears now to move more freely. A cool feature of this camera is it has a 52 mm screw thread for attaching filters. The back of the camera is held in place with strong magnets and you pull the back off to load and unload your film. It also has a black felt back for light protection. Loading the 120 mm film is quite easy after a bit of practice and you can see inside the bottom is spring loaded enabling you to pop your film in and even the support rods are made of wood. Renika have also added this neat little tiny fabric camera strap. It's not ideal if you want to place the camera on a flat surface, but the strap is easily removed using the screws. And they also included a metal tripod plate thread at the bottom. To advance a film, you have to use a coin or other implement, which could prove to be a bit frustrating if you manage to lose your coin. But I've always got my keys with me and I'd be shit out of luck if I was to lose a coin and keys at the same time on a shoot. However, for the user, I do think a little wooden knob would be easier. And the camera also comes with this funky little wooden exposure meter. Now, I've only ever used my LaRue 66 pinhole camera in the past. This is the only one I've ever used. Um, so I can't really do a massive comparison with this and other pinhole cameras. But between this and this, I like the way that you've got that big twisty dial at the front to cover and uncover the, the pinhole when you're making your exposures. This one, I've got no fears at all with jogging the camera. It's very light like so the only thing with this camera is when i'm walking around that's so easy to open if i nudge that i'm going to hit exposure on a frame that i've already shot and so that's one thing i've always been very careful with with this camera i know that i'm not going to not going to easily nudge that shutter open or close so um, that's one good thing that i like about that the only other thing was the top of the camera you've got to use a coin or a key to advance your frame with this one it's a little wooden knob and you just turn it that way um you know it's no big deal but We'll see as we get out. So that's the camera in a nutshell, and I'm going to be loading it now with some Fuji Acros 100. Kindly sent to me by Mr. Casey Face uh, in Los Angeles. Mate, thanks a lot uh, for sending me this film. I really appreciate it. First thing I'm going to need to do is get the strap off that camera because I don't really like straps on my cameras. Quite easy to do. Like I said, two screws on the top, two on the bottom. Strap goes off. Take the camera down the beach. We'll get some nice close-up stuff and see how it can perform there, and also some wider shots as well. So it's a couple of days after I did that intro. The weather wasn't too great to go out and shoot that afternoon, so I completely abandoned it. I've done a few shots in the garden, done a few shots indoors as well, just to get used to this camera a little bit. Um, but now I'm on the beach and the tide's out. It's near enough coming about an hour or so from sunset, so the light's quite good. The sun's over that way, the beach is over that way, and I'm gonna hopefully get some good shots using this uh, Renika pinhole camera. What I have done is I've taped up the back of it with, um, with some black tape. Now the reason I've done that is because I'm not sure if this is going to leak light. Uh, now I'm outside in the sunlight and stuff like that. I'm not sure if it's going to leak light. So I'm just stepping on a side of precaution. However, I'm going to take the tape off on the last couple of frames that I shoot. I've got Fuji Acros 100 loaded inside this film. I'm going to be doing the metering on that DSLR, which is videoing me at the moment. And I'm going to be converting the metering using a pinhole app that I've got on my phone, which will convert the metering that I do 
for uh, this particular uh, type of pinhole camera. So uh, let's get off, we'll get some shots and see what we can come up with. First shot, 250th of a second at 5.6 it's given me. I've got nice skies over there, uh, nice reflections from the sea coming in. I could do some foreground stuff, but there's nothing around, no logs or anything like that. But um, let's just keep this as a, a natural looking seascape, shall we? Uh, so let's have a look at my pinhole app. 250th of a second is a three second exposure, a few jack crosses, no reciprocitary failure at that. Um, of that scale, so advance the film. Where's my coin? There it is. Make sure I put my coin in my pocket or in a particular pocket because um, <laughs> I don't want to lose it. I've got my car keys in case, but it's nice and straight. Three seconds, and then I'm going to put the red filter on and try it. Okay, one two, three. Let's get the filter on. Uh, I need to compensate three stops for this filter. Right, red filter's on. In 24 seconds with that. 250 to three seconds. So we're going to do another one at three seconds. Where's my coin? That's in my pocket. Ow. Number four. Okay, shot number nine. This hasn't got any tape on now, so I'm hoping I don't get any light leaks through the back. I felt like I jogged the camera on that shot. A 12 second exposure. I'm not sure if it will make any difference if you jog it at the start or at the end. Um, so I'm going to use my lens cap and I'm just going to cover the pinhole, open the shutter, put it off count, put it back and then close the shutter. Uh, that way I'll eliminate any shake. I thought I shook that last one. So I've got one more shot left in this camera. I'll go and shoot that off somewhere. Then I'm going to change over and put a roll of FP4 in here. Uh, I've still got a bit more time with the light, but I won't film that, I'm going to put the video camera away. So uh, I'm going to get one more shot done, put the video camera away, we'll get back home and see what we've got in the development process.
So that's my first time using the Renica Prosta 6x6 medium format pinhole camera, and I must say the guys in Belarus have done a fantastic job. It's a great little camera, I really did enjoy using it, and I can't fault it really in any way. It just works, and I came back with some really nice negatives. Pleased to say there was no light leaks, so that's always a bonus. I'll just show you some of the prints that I've come back with. Remember the little tiny, um, well it's only tiny, but it looks big in the print. That was the log uh, that I found, a bit of driftwood. I'm pleased I had something in the foreground, always makes the seascape look a bit more interesting. And that was the original test print that I did in the darkroom uh, making this. I'm gonna be putting these on eBay, this and this as one. So if you like this print, you can bid on it on eBay. I'll send you the link in the description below and also in the past people have said to me when I've put stuff out on eBay have you got any more well I don't usually go in a dark room and print off a load but this time I did I printed an extra four copies of that print and I'll be putting them on my website so if any of you guys want to help the channel uh, support what I'm doing so I can get new stuff for the dark room jump on my website and you can buy a print also I went off and shot the fp4 off video and again I've got some nice negatives back and this was my favourite. This is a wave breaker on the beach with some reflections going on. And again, a test print as well. This was FP4 developed in Perceptol. And again, I'll be putting this one on eBay for you guys to auction. So there's two auctions going on on eBay. And like the log, I printed off another four to put on my website. So if you guys are interested in buying a print from me, jump on there and have a look. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you get notifications on the new videos that I'll be making coming out. And don't forget to give this video a massive thumbs up, a big like, so everyone else can get to see this video and put their input in the comments below for everyone else learning film photography to see. I'm also gonna say thank you very much to the guys that support my channel on Patreon. Uh, I really do appreciate your support. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to get paper and play around and chemicals as much as I do. So uh, I really do appreciate the love and support you guys give me. I'll catch you later. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one.